Hey all, Ryan the Tone Geek here, and today we are going to be doing an analysis of the Ibanez TS-10 circuit and what makes it different than a TS-9 or a TS-808, but I'm just going to cut right to the chase, and spoiler alert, it's this resistor right here. That's the difference between the TS-10 and all the other series, like the TS-9. Let me throw a bunch of stuff in here. So I've been kind of sort of reverse engineering and looking at the circuit, looking at traces, and how to take a do-it-yourself TS-808 pedal, like the or circuit board, like the little green screen machine by Pedal P, uh, PCB. I'm not sponsored by them. Or any of the other TS-808 clones that are out there, circuit board, do-it-yourself circuit boards like this one. Um, it is possible, which is some little crafty work, to add the, uh, the drawings are a little bit different, but here we go. So you'll notice, I'll get my little pointer here, <laughs> that will follow off of Q1. We have a non-polarized one microfarad capacitor, positive here. Um, some do-it-yourself schematics might have the positive over um, basically facing where the signal comes in and that's correct but you really should have a non-polarized anywhere in this coupling that um, signal chain and what that does is if there's any DC present or DC voltage present it's going to knock that down so it's only AC or your guitar signal that persists after this point um, the reason why non-polarized is required here or should be required here is the signal will be positive on this side and electrolytic capacitors like the one shown here does not like reverse voltage going through it. So basically here's a positive, there's a negative. When the sine wave goes up and down, pretend like this is the 0.0, .0 volts, it goes up and down, right? Um, that negative voltage could harm this electrolytic over time. So that's why non-polarized is preferred. Um, Keeley Electronics prefers and puts them in all their pedals, it seems. Um, when they did the Boss BD2 uh, clone, or not clone, when they did the Boss BD2 Keeley mod, the FAT mod, uh, they replaced all those capacitors with high, um, all the signal capacitor coupling capacitors with high microfarad non-polarized in that chain so that gives you a better sound in theory but anyway so this 220 ohm resistor is in uh, series or basically in the signal chain and over here on my um, TS-808 clone you'll see that it just passes right through so this is you know basically it's an open secret this is the TS-10 mod if you will I'm not really quite sure what this resistor does is it lowers the volume going into the positive uh, feedback here on this op amp. So basically it's just dropping the signal. I don't know if that equates. It really shouldn't equate to much tonal difference. But as you know, most of the people on the internet are going to tell you, the TS-10 is a holy grail in some respects. You know, obviously uh, John Mayer, Keith Urban... Steve Ray Vaughan, a bunch of other great guitar players prefer the TS-10, it seems, on stage. So basically what we need to do to modify an existing TS-808 or modify a TS-9 if you have one, because uh, there are a little bit... Uh, and that says tantalum. That's for tantalum, not uh, taint or anything obscure like that. Um, we basically are going to remove this non-polarized cap or if you haven't even put one in like I have right here, um, I'm going to just maintain only one leg, the positive leg, in the positive side. So you might need to use your multimeter to figure out which one's the positive going to this chip um, and then which one's the negative going to the op amp. Now the op amp um, is going to be number three. So if you have your chip with you, and the little dot is on top, oops, like this. Let's see if I can focus the camera. 
basically you're counting back from the dot on the left side. So one, two, three back on that side is the input where this um, resistor will basically you'll get a continuity. So, well, what if you have a TS9? Well, this is the capacitor here that you're going to want to change. I'll show you. Uh, where'd my little pointer go? This capacitor here, we're going to remove, and I'll do that in a later video because I want to do a comparison. Um, remove that, and then just add a little leg with a 220 ohm resistor. Now you can buy these 220 ohm resistors anywhere on the internet. You can probably pick them up on Amazon. I picked mine up from Tata Electronics. Uh, they usually have like a 15% off, which is kind of cool. So this whole packet was like 10 cents of 220 ohm resistors. Um, and then we basically only have the positive leg going into the circuit as it is. Okay. And then the 220 ohm is going to be wired to the negative before it goes into the negative part. So I'm going to set up and give you a demonstration on how I'm going to modify this design, the stock design, to incorporate a TS10 220 ohm resistor. All right, so here I have a non-polarized cap, 1UF, from Small Bear, and then I have these 220F, or 20, 220 ohm resistors. I picked those up from Tata. And basically, what I'm going to do for this step is, even though it's non-polarized and it doesn't matter which one's positive or negative, I'm, there is a longer lead, so I'm going to just adhere to those sort of standards. And what I'm going to do is lay down the capacitor like this um, and then just bend the lead in. So I'm going to take this, whoops, bend the lead down as straight as I can. So now the new position will be like that. All right, still maintaining the other leg. I accidentally already started soldering this project, so I'm gonna have to try to get that in the hole. Oh man. Here's what I'll do is I'll try to prime this hole. Ah. Sometimes we'll open it up. Not this time though. But I did get a little dent in here, so that's good. This should help with my alignment. There we go. Okay, so that resistor, I can probably straighten it out a little bit. Or this capacitor, sorry. It's in like that. I'm now going to take one of these 220 ohm resistors right here. I'm sure there's multiple ways to do this, and if you have a better way that you think is going to work for you, go for it. This is how I'm going to approach mine. It's going to do a similar thing. I'm just going to put this resistor through the hole straight. Oops. 
Again, this is a lot easier if you don't screw up like me the first time. I try to avoid solder wick whenever I can. Um, but I may... Oh. Alright, so there we go. Look at that. Got lucky. So I'm going to stand this resistor straight up, basically. And then this leg of the capacitor, see what I'm doing there? Is I'm going to connect it to the top of the resistor. There we go. So now it's going to make it in series, not in parallel. So I'll just tack this in. Oops. Let gravity do its thing. Um, yep, just check for any cold solder joints or anything like that. Oops, I'm pulling the resistor out. It's not a good morning for me. I need more coffee. Love, 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 love coffee. All right, so now let's try to make this a little fancy before I solder it together. I'm going to do my best to try and make a right angle here, okay? Then I'll make another right angle like this. And then I'll fold, let's see, this over. Like that. Now, should I just should I wrap around it? What do you think, guys? It's a little risky, but it's going to give us a great connection. All right. So hopefully that looks clean on camera. It looks clean to me. I'm happy with it. Um, just kind of rotate to the side. And I'm going to solder that together. This is going to be satisfying, I feel. We're maintaining a low profile as well. Um, it doesn't stick up any higher than in another capacitor. And it's not in the way of anything, so I'm pretty happy how that turned out. So let me just take this out of the circuit board holder. Um, ooh, I should probably just tack this together one more time. Some people, you could probably put this on a switch if you were really crafty. I think I'm the only person to do something like this. Okay. So, pull this out. Here's the way it looks. So positive going into the capacitor, and then on the way out I'm intercepting and putting that 220 ohm resistor. Voila, it's a TS-10 now. One thing to do note is the TS-10 has the same oops, focus um, output resistor pair here, the 470 and then the 100K. Um, if you have a straight up TS-808, schematic, you're going to see different resistor capacitor pairs. So just be noted. Just take a note there. Alright, so what I'm going to do, one last thing is to test the um, resistance just to verify that you did the right thing. So, see if I can pin. So, pin 3 again. Here's the top of the resistor. So, in theory, I should be able to see 
around 220 ohm come through. There she is. I'm probably not holding it the best. So there she is. She drops to about 220 on the dot, so it's a good resistor. Tata Electronics. Shout out to you guys for free. I'm not sponsored by them. Have a good one.